questa... Good morning. In this session, we will talk about alternate pathologies and driving. My name is uh, Demetrius Nelly. I am uh, an eye care specialist uh, and uh, I deal with uh, also legal uh, uh, indeed issues and uh, we deal with uh, uh, agronomy and driving license um, and uh, we would like to thank Comedia for giving us the opportunity to uh, speak to you. Speakers uh, are all authoritative speakers uh, and uh, most uh, uh, of them are known to you. I will make a brief introduction talking about ocular pathologies in relation to driving. First of all, a small introduction. Uh, the fact that uh, recently huge changes uh, have taken place uh, with respect to regulations, uh, especially because uh, European regulations uh, have been adopted and implemented. Uh, so anyone working in this uh, field uh, should then have the necessary tools uh, to make a suitable uh, uh, driving uh, examination. And we know that uh, safety on the street uh, is uh, fundamental for our society. In 2012, we had uh, 3,653 uh, deaths uh, in uh, many, many accidents uh, with uh, uh, many blast persons and injured persons. And the category of drivers uh, mostly involved in accidents are over 80s and uh, less than 24 years old. Uh, but Whereas uh, for the younger people, the causes are related to lack of experience uh, or risky behavior. But for over 80, this is due to a deficit in the eyesight and cognitive deficit as well. That's why a series of regulations have been issued uh, so that according to the age, uh, then the various persons uh, are required to observe certain limitations that increase uh, with age. Uh, the driving license uh, uh, indeed is uh, valid for 10 years and uh, has to be renovated uh, once uh, per year after a certain age. Why site is so important because we know that 90% of sensory input uh, for brain centers uh, derives uh, from a vision, from sight. And for sure, then eyesight is uh, one of the most important capabilities uh, for driving. And we know that uh, visual defects uh, may cause uh, car accidents, whereas it uh, has not been established yet, uh, which is uh, the degree of vision required for safe driving. Then Dr. Marino will talk about these and the fact that the European community is issuing uh, rules uh, that uh, are common for the entire community. As a matter of fact, uh, these has adopted uh, different uh, regulations. But uh, I will talk now um, about the ocular pathologies that uh, affect uh, indeed the daily activity of uh, the persons. Of course, uh, I talk about patients instead of subjects. So, first of all, uh, we see cataract, glaucoma, amyonopsia, diabetic retinopathy, maculopathy, and uh, diplopia. So, especially the first. Uh, especially the second, the third, and the fourth uh, uh, are in the order of importance. Are the first, the second, and third causes of blindness in industrialized countries. And so you should understand that there is a high percentage of these for over 70s. Is there anyone listening to simultaneous translation? Can you please? Uh, Tell us if you're listening to the simultaneous translation. Yes, okay. So, just to see why this happens. We know that cataract is one of the main uh, causes uh, of uh, reduction of uh, high size in over 60s and about 50% of over 75. Uh, 
as uh, initial cataract and uh, 25 percent uh, of an evolved form of cataract uh, and uh, indeed uh, they refer great uh, difficulties uh, in uh, driving during uh, night and uh, with bad weather and in crowded streets and uh, indeed uh, those with cataract uh, have a uh, 2.5 times uh, uh, more uh, indeed, uh, chances uh, of uh, having an, a car accident. So, what are the causes of cataract? Uh, first of all, there is a reduction of visual acuity. There is an alteration of uh, the visual field uh, with uh, a scattered reduction, uh, monocular diplopia, uh, reduced uh, uh, vision at night, uh, a reduction of sensitivity to contrast, uh, and there is a d increase in disability from glares. And so we see here from uh, so on the left and from left to right, uh, you see the vision of a patient with cataract on the left side, an initial stage of cataract uh, in the middle, uh, uh, average uh, degree of cataract, and on the right side, an important degree of cataract. Another pathology is, which is a quite important uh, and that only recently has been taken into account for driving is glaucoma. Glaucoma is a pathology uh, that um, actually causes an increase in ocular pressure and affects about 67% of European population with uh, an irreversible loss of uh, optical fibers uh, and uh, indeed uh, um, damage to the visual field is a silent killer of eyesight, great familiarity, and it worsens because it causes a narrowing of the visual field from the periphery towards the center. Several studies have been conducted, and recently a study has been published on the British Journal by uh, British uh, um, opticians, uh, and they have seen uh, indeed uh, difficulties in driving uh, on the part of patients with glaucoma and with a higher rate of car accidents and bilateral forms uh, uh, associated with a higher rate to, um, than giving up driving. You see the alterations of uh, the glaucoma pathologies from the left upper part. Uh, you see the onset, then a worsening going down to advance the forms uh, and the presence uh, just of the small island uh, of visual field. Another pathology which is uh, very important is the hemianopsia. So half a vision that is related to cerebrovascular pathologies, traumas, tumors, and malformations. This hemianopsia, in general, is related to neurological syndromes like hemiparesis, and there are other forms that are less serious, but others that are uh, indeed more uh, severe with uh, macular pathologies involvement. So what happens uh, in uh, people with hemianopsia? First of all, especially if it is on the side, they're not able to follow the objects uh, laterally, they have difficulties in powering water into a glass, they have difficulties in moving in crowded area, difficulties in orientation, uh, and uh, um, they are surprised by moving objects uh, or persons that uh, appear and disappear all of a sudden, and they're not able to actually follow the, uh, following the sign during reading and they may have problems in knowing where to put their feet. And so this is, a, uh, you see, uh, persons uh, that can see on uh, 
the half part uh, uh, on the left, not on the right side. And also here you see an image uh, of a person and what that person sees uh, with a uh, right hemianopsia. And we should remember that uh, you may have different forms uh, of these pathologies, especially if they are B temporal, uh, where you have the loss of the B temporal side of uh, one eye and also of the other. Another ocular pathology related to driving is uh, uh, diabetes retinopathy. And uh, apart from uh, diabetes uh, forms in detail, uh, we have an alteration of the visual field, and these alterations uh, are quite important, especially in patients uh, that uh, have followed a laser therapy uh, to treat uh, their diabetes. Um, so you may have uh, uh, indeed uh, visual loss, uh, and uh, you see this uh, uh, visual reduction in spots, like on the uh, right side. Uh, you have a reduced vision at night uh, and a reduced sensitivity to contrast. Uh, then other pathologies uh, that are quite important. Uh, the first one, which is the first cause of blindness, uh, is uh, maculopathy related to age with a reduction of central uh, visual capability, a reduction of visual acuity, deformation of images, uh, and uh, these assertive uh, form can be treated uh, with certain solutions. Um, so what are the alterations in terms of sight? First of all, you don't have uh, a central uh, a visual field. On the left side, uh, you can see how a person sees with an initial stage of maculopathy and on the right side uh, a person driving with this uh, indeed uh, loss at the center. Another important ocular pathology which is uh, quite important is the plopia, uh, meaning double vision that can be horizontal, vertical or oblique. Uh, neurological uh, or local causes, and in this picture you see how a person with uh, diplopia sees uh, a, a car driving towards uh, him or her. So I think I finished with this, uh, so I leave the floor to Professor Marino, who will uh, talk about regulations after Professor Marino. We will have uh, Costantino uh, Bianchi, and then uh, we will have uh, Silvio Maffioletti, Emilio De Lady, who is a uh, famous journalist, uh, will tell us uh, about the new things. Okay. Eh, io devo parlarvi una parte. So I will have to talk about a boring issue because I'm going to talk about uh, the entry into force of regulations. As you know, we have to stick to European regulations uh, that uh, go beyond uh, the domestic borders, uh, so we are obliged uh, to apply the same rules as the rest of Europe uh, and to adapt uh, to the same criteria. So, law number 59 is the relevant law that entered into force. There is something missing here. Again, there are some uh, restrictions uh, and uh, corrections. So today we talk about visual aids, uh, but uh, within the framework of visual aids, uh, the European regulations uh, point out uh, not only the use of uh, spectacles and contact lenses, but also the use of uh, spectacles with particular filters, with particular opacity levels, uh, and uh, glasses with prisms. We often forget about that because uh, if we are obliged to wear contact lenses, this type of obligation may be a particular one. So if I have diplopia, I may drive 
uh, by wearing an occluser. So if I avoid using one eye that is diplopic. There are some restrictions, uh, some specific restrictions uh, that have to be uh, taken into account. The Commission can uh, indicate uh, whether there are driving restrictions uh, only during the day, for instance, uh, for people who have problems in uh, uh, seeing after twilight, after the sunset, and this is often the case uh, for diabetic patients and uh, people who have a very high retinal sensitivity, or restrictions uh, for elderly people in terms of number of kilometers. Uh, so you can have a driving license uh, and you can drive to the supermarket, you can drive uh, to your town or city, let's say 20, 30 kilometers. However, this person is not allowed to drive on a highway. These are very useful regulations that uh, unfortunately are not always applied. Or seasonal driving, so you can go to the pharmacy, you can go to your doctor. However, uh, it is much better that you drive on your own, that you try to limit the damage that you may cause when driving, or limitations in terms of the number of kilometers. So you see uh, there are further restrictions uh, for younger drivers, um, no um, uh, possibility to drive the highway and no alcohol driving. And this applies uh, to all uh, young uh, drivers uh, and all those uh, uh, that uh, all the people who were uh, positive to the alcohol test and uh, his driver license was withdrawn by the police. Here you see the minimum requirements for driving, so effective vision, no cardiovascular diseases, no diabetes, no epilepsy, no uh, alcohol or drug addiction, no um, uh, uh, psychological drugs and no psychological conditions or diseases. This is what the legislator pointed out. So particular attention has to be given to visual acuity, to the field of vision, to twilight vision, glare and contrast sensitivity, diplopia, propia and any other uh, visual function that may hamper safe driving. Well, this is uh, great because the legislator has certainly uh, caught the point. A driver has to see properly and to have a significant uh, vision equity has to undergo certain types of uh, tests and tests uh, have to be carried out by the eye doctor, by the uh, optician, by someone who can uh, uh, investigate the ability of a person to drive so that drivers are in a position to drive safely and uh, without causing any damages to third parties. If there are any doubts during the eye test, uh, that person has to refer to the local medical commission. And within the local medical commission, there must be an eye doctor or an optician who can assess the person. The commission collects uh, all the documents and um, assesses the quality of the certificates issued to that person. I can say that, and we can say that, the Commission assesses based on documents and has no possibility to participate in these tests. So what about the type of vision that a person must have in order to drive? So for driving a motorcycle or a, a car, seven diopters at least and two diopters at least for the worst eye. So he cannot see actually very well if he or she drives a powerful car or a powerful motorbike. The field of vision, however, has to be at least 120 degrees, uh, 
uh, with an extension not below 50 degrees to the right uh, or to the left and 20 degrees to the top or uh, below. So the field of vision has to be sufficient enough so that the person can identify any obstacles also uh, on the side. If we have a progressive disease, as we heard from Professor Spinelli earlier, so if we have a diabetes, for instance, uh, which is the most frequent disease, uh, or uh, macular de degeneration, or uh, retinal retinopathy, or retinal diseases, then we have to take other aspects into account. In this case, uh, the driver license has to be renewed before a medical commission that will uh, uh, renew the driver license uh, for a more limited period of time, one or two years maximum. As for monocles, um, organic or functional monocles, um, the visas has to be at least uh, eight out of 10. So eight out of 10 for monocular uh, patients and a well-tolerated corrective lens, as we can read in the legislation. During the test, we do not have the ability to assess whether the lens is well tolerated or not. And this is actually where the opticians should support us. It has to be a lens that the patient wears on a regular basis and that is comfortable to him or her. So the person has to be monocular, has to be monocular for at least six months, and the eye that allows the person to see properly, has to have a horizontal vision of at least 120 degrees, uh, not less than 60 degrees to the right or left, and 25 degrees to the top, 30 degrees uh, to um, the bottom. Good uh, contrast sensitivity. The only eye that the patient has has to be perfect, in other words. The local medical commission will then assess uh, whether there are any restrictions uh, during daytime, uh, etc. Professor Spinelli mentioned uh, di diplopia. Double vision is one of the most frequent conditions. Uh, sometimes there are sudden diplopias, so uh, uh, inflammatory palsy or paralysis uh, that inhibit uh, driving very strongly. And during that period, uh, uh, patients do not always refer to doctors. Uh, uh, so if the driver license has to be renewed, uh, the patient will not say that uh, he, suffer, he or she suffers from double vision. So this is a condition which is much more serious compared to other uh, diseases, in my opinion. We shall not forget that diplopia is not monovision. If I had monovision, I would be able to see properly. In other words, uh, Formula One drivers, for instance, uh, who due to uh, diffuse uh, burns uh, had to drive during a race, uh, they used uh, just one eye. Well, I don't remember that Austrian driver. I think it was Niki Lauda. Niki Lauda was that driver. So Niki Lauda really wanted to take part in the Formula One Grand Prix out of passion. So even though he uh, suffers from burns, uh, he um, covered one eye and he was able to drive uh, anyway. So what we need in that case, we need at least one eye that is able to see properly and is able to see one object and to focus uh, very quickly. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, if we are driving to 100 kilometers per hour, we have to be able to focus uh, and to identify objects very quickly. This, is, uh, this applies to drivers and uh, professional drivers and uh, similar categories. For higher driver licenses, uh, so um, apart from motorcycles and cars, uh, we have uh, further uh, standards to uh, stick to. You see 8 out of 10 and the other eye 4 out of 10. In this respect, 
So eight diopters. Eight diopters uh, is usually the numbers that is uh, applied. Nowadays, um, there are uh, glasses uh, that are very uh, high quality, also for uh, 10 diopters and not only for eight diopters. The legislator mentions, uh, again, uh, a well-tolerated uh, correction. The horizontal field of vision has to be at least 160 degrees, 80 degrees to the right and left, 30 degrees to the top and 30 degrees to the bottom. There may be a restriction for twilight. Throughout my career, I, I have never seen any significant twilight restrictions. I may have seen some cataract patients who uh, were not allowed to drive uh, at night, or there may be patients uh, with a history of uh, diplopia or uh, amyopia. When we had uh, a sudden uh, uh, retinal hemorrhage or a sudden diplopia, there must be at least uh, six months of observation before uh, going back to driving again, and the local medical commission uh, will then decide whether to renew the driver license or not. As you know, there is an important opinion. There is a new uh, element uh, that allows us to better sleep at night. Uh, the CPAP is an oxygen mask that allows us to sleep better at night to reduce obesity. But patients with a CPAP that uh, are included in this regional uh, in this original protocol may have some problems uh, while driving because the driver license uh, cannot be issued unless they have a certain uh, degree of oxygen saturation. I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope that eyesight examinations are not performed like in Mogadishu back in uh, 1992 and I hope that uh, the eye doctor uh, office as well equipped uh, with proper equipment. Thank you and now we will uh, listen to individual matins. Uh, good morning everybody. I have to quick uh, to be very quick uh, because I have to show you the methods uh, which all the things uh, that has been uh, uh, elucidated uh, have been researched to you so far so how they can be measured so here you have uh, a summarizing uh, table of what has been said so far by Marino you see all of the limitations uh, for uh, giving the driving license uh, to group one and group two so first the column uh, not so important a driving license and uh, the other column uh, for uh, the driving license uh, of uh, trucks uh, or uh, public transportation means. So, okay. So what has to be done is included in this uh, circular that uh, defines many things but not everything. So concerning visual acuity, up to type uh, tables uh, have to be used uh, with the Sloan characters uh, with five letters uh, per line. So you see here an example of this uh, table or an equivalent uh, electronic device and they have to reach uh, 12 tenths. So the uh, a table only with uh, 10 terms is not enough. So the fact that uh, um, the person has to be uh, at a distance of uh, 3 meters or 5 meters uh, and uh, you see one line uh, uh, where a patient uh, has to recognize uh, three symbols out of five 
So I won't go into details uh, with these. Uh, and concerning uh, sensitivity to contrast, uh, I have to use uh, a sensitivity table to, uh, of uh, Pelly Robbins uh, or an equivalent uh, table or an electronic device uh, that uh, must have uh, been calibrated and the test has to be done uh, with the subject at a distance of three meters. Concerning lighting, so when you measure the sensitivity to contrast, uh, you have to check that the environmental light has to be such that on the table uh, uh, there is uh, 300 luxes uh, with a tolerance of 500 and 400. Concerning the test, uh, this uh, has to be uh, performed in uh, binocular vision and the test is uh, correctly performed uh, if the person is uh, able uh, to recognize uh, two characters out of uh, three. The lighting of the environment has to be such uh, so the results have to be such that at least there must be a 6% contrast or 3% for higher driving licenses. And for the twilight vision, as I already mentioned, uh, an optotype uh, table uh, similar to that used for visual acuity is used uh, or uh, an equivalent electronic device uh, with uh, one or two lux uh, in the environment uh, so that uh, on the table there must be at least uh, one lux. And uh, you can use, for instance, a light with uh, 15 watts at 4 meters uh, from the table. And uh, the, indeed, the, the subject uh, should be able to see at least one line uh, for a patent per driving license one uh, or two lines uh, for license two. With regard to sensitivity to glare, the table should be placed at a distance of three meters uh, with two lights uh, placed at one meter distance on the left and on the side on the right side uh, so that there might be a lighting of four hundred uh, and 500 luxes, and you see an example of what happens and the effect of glaring caused by these two lamps placed on the sides. And uh, on the optotype uh, table, there must be a lighting of uh, 300 luxes. In these conditions, the subject should read at least the letters of the first or second line. For a type 1 driving license, uh, one line is enough, and for uh, the second class uh, license, uh, they uh, should be able to read the second line as well. Considering the recovery time after glaring, you use the usual optotype table or an equivalent system, and a light source that can be indeed uh, a portable light uh, such as this one, a vision light, uh, producing 200 lux uh, at uh, 20 centimeters from the lux meter. And uh, the environment should be dark, uh, and during reading, uh, the environment uh, should have uh, uh, the same light uh, used uh, for visual acuity. So the test should be performed monocularly for both eyes, and of course uh, you need the correction. And uh, uh, of course you use the result of the best eye, and after maximum one minute you then cover one eye and you put the light source at three centimeter from the contralateral eye. I didn't understand why they wrote contralateral because this does not make sense, but this is uh, what we read there and this should be done for 10 seconds and then the person should be able to read within one minute uh, two terms uh, for higher licenses uh, and uh, four terms uh, for sorry, two terms for lower licenses and four terms for higher licenses. Visual field. I don't know if I have the time to uh, talk about this. 
but we can do with others. Why? Because so literally, we see the regulation that where necessary, where it is necessary to verify the visual field, but it's not clear when this is necessary, when this is required. Yes, of course, in the presence uh, of uh, uh, medical uh, diagnosis with the suspicions of uh, progressive uh, eye diseases, uh, but it would have been uh, better to indicate uh, of the measurement of visual field in case of glaucoma, in case of diabetes, retinopathy, and so on. But this should not be leaving to you know, individual choices. And indeed, the law allows you to do this. But I think you should stop here. And then, uh, Mafioletti, please. Yes, let's resume from the table, the table of the law, uh, four considerations. Uh, one that is a more general consideration and some more specific uh, consideration. So the studies on uh, safety on the road started uh, at the end, uh, uh, indeed, of the 20th century, and we uh, started um, understand how it was possible to reduce the number of accidents and the number of, uh, indeed, uh, victims. Uh, you see this uh, project uh, dating back to the year 2000. Uh, and we see here a, a world that we didn't know very much. Uh, we know that the dangers are related uh, to older people uh, with uh, mm, indeed uh, lower reactions uh, with psychophysical conditions, uh, but we didn't uh, know the, the problems uh, of uh, very young drivers, uh, where you have these uh, young drivers that may be dangerous, uh, not so much for physical uh, disabilities, but for other problems related to his uh, young age and to his uh, uh, lack of confidence. So the first research projects uh, showed that there is not so much awareness about the risks that run on the road and about the dangers with driving. So these research projects dating back to 2000 with uh, 1,600 uh, persons. And you see in the sample, there was this self-perception. The perception of self was good in normal conditions and was even better in environmental conditions that were worse with rain and snow, meaning that the person feels more confident when the person is driving with snow and bad weather. This is quite paradoxical and even in psychophysical conditions, a person feels a, a better driver when uh, he or she is tired than when he or she is not. So a lack of awareness of limitations for driving. So we have widened the range, we have uh, performed other interviews that have confirmed this aspect. There is not so much awareness of the importance of a very good psychophysical condition. The second aspect, again in a research study that was conducted in 2007-2008 concerning uh, indeed uh, uh, the various uh, aspects. Uh, and uh, in this study it was considered how there is uh, an attitude towards uh, a propension to uh, accidents and the visual conditions. So for those driving, is it more dangerous to uh, drive uh, with loss of uh, visual acuity or uh, indeed uh, with uh, other situations? And here we have 137 subjects. We have uh, indeed uh, make, uh, made up a coefficient 
and the result was that visual acuity is not so important. Uh, so those having a lower visual acuity compared to others uh, are present in all three categories, uh, meaning those uh, uh, doing uh, few, many, or even more car accidents. So uh, there is uh, indeed uh, uh, not such an incidence, but the binocular stability is much more important, uh, and this creates uh, a greater link uh, to the propension to a car accident. So, did you see that in the category where uh, there are the most of accidents, uh, three rather than one and two, where there is uh, the percentage of those uh, with uh, binocular stability. So law is uh, indeed a right. The law centered the point. So you have to evaluate uh, those uh, sight capabilities that make vision unstable. Those making a lot of our car accidents include those uh, that have an unstable uh, uh, sight rather than having only one eye. The person with only one eye has a stable vision, but those uh, uh, with uh, binocular instability may alternate uh, uh, single vision with double vision. This is very dangerous. Another aspect uh, in the evolution of these uh, research studies uh, is in relation to the factors uh, making safety more unstable. And uh, we see cognitive factors, uh, crowding, destruction, uh, deficit in attention, uh, and tiredness, uh, uh, night apnea. And you see a difference uh, between uh, uh, a crowded uh, visual field and known crowded visual field. The, the difference is very evident. Our attentive capability is a limited resource, uh, and so if this is uh, scattered uh, among uh, a few or many uh, objects, uh, creates a difference. But we reason as uh, opticians and uh, as ophthalmologists, uh, but we have to consider psychological aspects. Uh, visual crowding is also a cognitive crowding that is related uh, to the crowding of uh, stimuli. You see this uh, child, for instance, uh, on the left side of the visual field is not so much uh, visible. If you look at the distant target, but it is more uh, visible on the right side because uh, um, there is such a crowding of images on the uh, left that makes that person less visible. Another aspect of the cognitive function is that of the mobile cell, but consider all the other distractors we have uh, in the car, and there are so many distracting elements that uh, make our attention less focused uh, on what is in front of us. So these are other aspects characterizing driving uh, as of today, and this is different from one person to another, and also different uh, from one time and the other during day or during night. Another Another element we have examined is that after the introduction of the law, its real application, and I've been lucky indeed uh, because uh, I'm part of a regional commission directed by Dr. Ayello that studied the modalities to implement this law, and an evident difficulty appeared. Uh, so the times are too long and they cannot be managed uh, by the Commission for Driving Licenses. Uh, and what can we do for that? Uh, this is a table we have prepared uh, to show that reducing the times that uh, are indeed uh, um, voluntary, so the waiting time, adaptation time at night, uh, but we may reach at least uh, five minutes per person, and you should consider that this uh, time is uh, much less. Uh, so that's the first problem. And the other problem, as Dr. Bianchi said, uh, how can we do in a, a room where more uh, people are examined? Uh, so how a person can 
adapt to uh, dark while the others are examined with daylight. So we may arrange, uh, uh, indeed, the testing room in a different way. And so we have forwarded uh, these uh, requests to the region. Uh, and we said the time is too long. We should be there at least five minutes. But we should have uh, monitors uh, with uh, rapid sequences. And the second request is to have uh, <coughs> Uh, studios uh, with uh, some uh, space to be dedicated to adaptation and these requests are being cited at the uh, regional commission so the uh, implementation and application of the law is quite difficult and the last aspect is related to, to uh, short term and long term objectives uh, car accidents have decreased uh, uh, so 30 500 uh, compared to 600 uh, is uh, indeed a good result. The law is a good law, but uh, we should have adequate instrumentation, adequate uh, spaces, uh, and uh, uh, specialized uh, training of uh, trainers and examiners, because these examiners uh, are not so well prepared and well trained, uh, because uh, specialized knowledge is required and then continues uh, scientific research studies. Uh, that's the work we did at Bikaka University and other projects that should be conducted uh, similar to this. So the regulations are quite good, but uh, we need a change in uh, the general behavior and general culture, but we are doing very well in Italy, and we need to increase the awareness uh, on this issue and think that those risking their lives on the road could be helped by other persons who are more aware, more controlled. And then I'd like to thank the Association of Car Accidents Victims that has supported us and has cooperated with us. And it was very important to meet these people who could change their pain in solidarity and promotion. And now Emilio De Leiti, editor-in-chief of Quattro Ruote magazine. Thank you very much for your participation. I would like to thank you so you may know the Quattro Ruote magazine. We have just celebrated the 60th anniversary from 1956 to 2016. I will briefly tell you about the development of car technology uh, to uh, complement with the issues that we have been discussing so far. Uh, maybe another time it will be interesting to discuss what, pro what Mr. Mafoletti pointed out, uh, that is the increasing complexity uh, of cockpits uh, in cars uh, through due to the uh, addition of uh, new systems like uh, navigation systems, infotainment systems that are becoming increasingly uh, complex and uh, that increase uh, the potential for distraction. Uh, mobile phones are another source of distraction. And uh, on the other hand, uh, cars are becoming increasingly safe uh, for the uh, driver and for the passengers in case of a car accident. However, the topic of my presentation is another one. I will uh, have a very brief uh, presentation and I will uh, briefly outline uh, the history of cars. So the lighting uh, system has become increasingly stable. We started with acetylene uh, systems and then uh, light bulbs uh, were introduced uh, and uh, the lighting technology developed uh, through time. Uh, there were tests uh, with iodine, uh, le uh, yellow lights, uh, for instance, that is, was the case in French cars uh, in the 60s. Uh, in recent times, however, we have uh, had a speed up of the process. Um, in the beginning of the new millennium, Xenon lights uh, were launched uh, to, onto the market uh, with this very white light uh, that uh, um, maybe some uh, 
how discomfortable they are made up of two uh, tungsten electrodes uh, with gas, filled with gas, and the arch between the two electrodes uh, creates a very uh, bright and white light, uh, which is uh, very comfortable for the drivers. Uh, however, there are two issues, two problems. They are much more expensive than traditional systems, and this is the reason why they are considered as an option, uh, or they are available only in high-end cars, but uh, they are uh, becoming increasingly widespread. And then we have also further aftermarket uh, technologies and systems, uh, and many of them uh, are also illegal. The legislator uh, <coughs> obliges uh, for Xenon lights uh, to install uh, an assistant for the automatic setting of the uh, light uh, in order to avoid uh, any blinding for the other cars. Some of these uh, uh, Xenon lights uh, do not have an automatic setting mechanism and therefore they are dangerous uh, and uh, illegal. However, in the tuning world, in the customization world, uh, you may find uh, some of these uh, Xenon lights uh, without uh, a setting mechanism. Uh, well, during the periodical inspection uh, of the cars, uh, well, uh, these uh, systems uh, can be identified. However, inspections occur on a four-year basis, and not only, not always, are they performed uh, correctly. So there is this type of risk. Another problem related uh, to the Xenon lights uh, are, uh, is the extremely expensive price uh, when they have to be repaired or replaced. And uh, uh, because, you know, car accidents can occur and if Xenon lights have to be replaced, the repair costs are much higher and this has an impact on insurance premium as well. Uh, insurance premiums in Italy are uh, the highest in Europe and, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, price has to be uh, refunded by the insurance companies. Let's move on to the latest generation lights. Uh, well, Xenon lights uh, are already well widespread on the market. Uh, in some cars they are an option, in other cars uh, they are um, already mounted on the car, but uh, for sure we can say that uh, Xenon lights are much more comfortable for drivers, especially at night and uh, um, at twilight. There are other uh, lighting systems, uh, the so-called adaptive or smart systems, um, that change the light based on uh, the speed, on traffic and on the direction. These lights have also uh, been uh, spreading on the market for quite some time. And then uh, we have other types of lights. So lights that switch on when you turn uh, the steering wheel and uh, so you are able to see any uh, obstacles or the uh, curve of the road uh, when, while turning. Latest uh, uh, generation uh, uh, systems are the following ones, uh, LED, uh, LED and laser. LED is a diode uh, that uh, emits light. I still remember when I was a child uh, that in my stereo system there were some LEDs that uh, were switched on and off based on the uh, sound intensity. Uh, when they were invented, uh, they were red, uh, red, and then they became white. And uh, since they have become white, uh, they have been increasingly used uh, in the automotive sector as well. Red uh, for the back lights and white uh, for the front lights. Laser, instead, uh, is made up of uh, three to four laser diodes uh, on each side. They have a blue light, which is converted into a white light through a special uh, fluorescent uh, material. And then we have a further evolution of the LEDs, uh, matrix LEDs. Uh, uh, they are smart LEDs. They are controlled by uh, uh, 
uh, electronic devices uh, to avoid uh, blinding. Let's take some examples. LEDs are well known to everyone, so new cars have uh, uh, very smart and very fancy lights uh, with beautiful designs, uh, so designers designed them. And uh, so instead of the traditional shapes uh, for rear and front lights, uh, we have new designs uh, that also help uh, create uh, the brand identity of a specific product. In this case, too, they uh, support the car manufacturer. They have a very long uh, life, so they are hardly replaced. They um, are very energy saving, so they are very interesting for hybrid cars, for instance, uh, or uh, environmentally friendly cars, uh, electrical cars, for instance. Um, and uh, so um, they are energy saving devices uh, with, uh, that allow cars uh, to have uh, uh, longer uh, <coughs> life. In case of an accident, uh, they may cost uh, even more than 2,000 euros, and this also applies uh, to the Xenon lights, as we said. This is an example for uh, latest uh, generation LEDs. Uh, well, this is a Mercedes a CLS, for instance, a high-end car. We have uh, 70 lights infrared as well that are switched on and off uh, based on the needs uh, and they are electronically uh, controlled uh, by a camera and a navigation system. The navigation system, for instance, knows in advance that I'm going to drive through a roundabout. So the right hand side of the car is lighted up so that I can better see any obstacles or any critical points on the road that I will encounter immediately afterwards. Um, if you have ever the chance, ever had the chance of uh, testing and trying these devices, uh, you uh, are certainly aware of the advantages provided by these devices. Lasers uh, came at a later stage, uh, so we are again uh, in the very high end uh, of the market, uh, so high performance Audi, for instance. This was originally an option that cost 9,000 euros, uh, like a Panda. Now the cost is about 2,000 euros. Uh, is it worthwhile? Well, uh, from a certain perspective, uh, the uh, light uh, is uh, really great. It was tested uh, for the first time by Audi on the 24 hour Le Mans cars, uh, so it is a 24 hour race. Um, drivers have to drive at night as well, so they need uh, the longest possible vision. However, there is a problem. So, one thing is if you all drive in the same direction, another thing if you also have uh, cars uh, driving against you. So, this is basically the light. First of all, lasers can be used also only in certain conditions uh, when the environment is totally dark. So if the system perceives uh, any light source are coming against us or uh, going in the same direction as we uh, do, the laser light is automatically switched off. So uh, they have to be added up to traditional lights, uh, uh, Xenon or LED lights. They are very expensive, as I said. I'm sorry, I'm missing the last slide, I think. So, if I can see up to 150 meters with uh, traditional lights and 300 meters in front of me uh, for Xenon, for laser, well, I can see up to 600 meters ahead of me. So, if I'm driving at uh, 300 kilometers per hour, I can perfectly see up to 600 meters ahead of me. But if I encounter any light source, so this, the laser light is immediately switched off. Hence, I will be able to see at 300 or 150 meters ahead of me. So, there are strong limitations uh, in terms of use uh, for this type of light against a very high price. It will certainly be uh, developed uh, and finalized. Uh, however, for the time being, it is extremely expensive. This is it for my side. I think I stick to the time allotted to me. It would be very interesting to uh, 
dwell on other interesting uh, topics, but I hope that uh, we will be able to meet again uh, to tackle any further issues. Thank you very much, and I would like to thank all the uh, professors and teachers uh, that attended this meeting. On the 30th of September, uh, our uh, society will have some conferences. On the 30th of September, we will have a conference on uh, eye diseases. The day before, however, we have a special session on driving. So